actually going to record the session so you'll, you'll see a, probably a yellow bar pop up at the bottom of the screen um, which will tell you that we're actually recording now so um, okay great right um, Right, the aims of this webinar basically is a health check, but in terms of what I'm going to do first of all is go through um, the Dell baseline, which um, there is a link which I'll show you where you can access that. And I'll give you a tour of just a Moodle module that has most of the Dell baseline uh, content in there and some of the activities. So. What, what, what it's not is trying to, sh it won't take you through how to do all of these things. Um, there have been previous webinars on setting up assignments and adding content and things like that. Um, but I'll also show you where you can access that type of help as well. Okay, so that's what the overall intention of this um, little talk is. Um, I'll speak for about 15 or 20 minutes um, and that then, then we'll, uh, and as we go through it, you can ask questions. Um, in terms of accessing the Dell baseline requirements, when you log into Moodle on the landing page that you come in, you'll see a box on the bottom left hand side. Um, in that box, it's headed VLE help, and there are three sections. So there's how to guide for VLE. Um, that's where you can actually access all the handouts or videos that will actually show you to, how to do all the things that I'll talk about and then also the Dell baseline requirements as well um, is, is on that page. Um, I won't go through the whole Dell, Dell baseline but it's basically divided up into four sections um, and those sections are really they're aimed at trying to give the student a consistent experience across their course so that they go into one module they're going to see roughly what they're going to see when they go into another module on their course and we avoid that scenario where one lecturer is adding a lot of content and then another one has virtually nothing in it but it's also really to um, the, the baseline is there to sort of support a more blended delivery of courses um, so it will include things like the module administration information so that will link that will mean things like uh, the module handbook things like um, timetable etc and I'll go through these things the teaching and learning activities so that will include really um, starting with the content so any lecture slides any PowerPoint um, slides um, handouts or maybe videos or that sort of thing and then thirdly assessment feedback so making sure that um, the assessment hand in sections are clearly labeled um, and they're set up correctly and then finally learner support information so that might be further information about um, assessment or exams or model answers or something like that um, so that's what the baseline is there for and that's what it contains um, so let's let's now what I'm going to do now is go into a live module um, and what I'll do now is is bring up the Moodle site so you'll see now starting to appear on your screen it will take a couple of seconds just to load um, is uh, the front page of, of, of Moodle um, and you'll probably be familiar with this sort of front page so it's a site overview and as I was saying before the box on, on VLE help is on the bottom left hand side of the screen so you've got those three sections there crucially how to guide to VLE so if you go into that section you'll find a lot of guides and resources on how to actually add content add a resource um, to, to your Moodle module and also there's the Dell baseline requirements document as well which is a nice checklist of the types of things that need to go into your module so I'm just going to go into one that I'd previously set up so in here 
Um, most of you will be familiar with the sort of look and feel of this page. So at the top of the page, I've got a welcome message. Um, obviously, this isn't a real course. This is an introduction for this webinar. So but I've put a message in there. And I think it's always useful to have a message at the top of the page. I mean, even before you probably go into the module, as soon as this is set up, your students will certainly go into the module. So they, they even before you probably see your students in a face-to-face -face situation, they'll probably come into their Moodle module. So I think it's worth maybe actually having a welcome message up there or even maybe a, just a brief outline about maybe what the module is or something about yourself. Um, then I've, I've kind of labelled the, the next three week, uh, the next course. I mean, typically speaking, you'll have week one, week two, week three, week four, and so on. Um, especially when a module gets copied over, it's very, it's quite often we have other weeks that are on that front page. If that's the case, I would strongly recommend that you delete those other weeks. So if you're not using them, there's no need for them to be up there. And the students, if they see a week, they're bound to click into it and think there's something missing if, it, if there's nothing in those sections. Anyway, so in terms of the Dell baseline, as I said before, it's kind of divided up into those four sections. So I've put them into four weeks. So if we go into week one, um, this is the type of content that the Dell baseline talks about. So typically speaking, we would expect all modules to include a module guide. Um, so as you can see, I have a module guide uploaded here. Um, again, I suspect most people are familiar with actually adding content. So I'm not going to show you how to do it, but just to recap to do that is to go to the top of the page, turn editing on, scroll down to the bottom of the page and then when you turn editing on you can add a resource so and I suspect for most modules you already have a module guide written so it's simply a question of just uploading it into that space um, second area that the Dell baseline talks about is the details of the course team so I've mocked one up here so if I click on the link um, I've just put it as a Word document and you can see um, the course team for this particular module. So there's myself and Mark um, below, below there. So um, again, the, two, the course team consists of, in this case, just two lecturers. Um, I've clearly labelled them who they are. Um, I've put an email address, so if a student needs to email you about anything in particular, they can do so. I've put office hours, so obviously that would vary from one lecturer to another. I've also put some student drop-in drop times, so um, again, that would vary from one course to another and a room number of where I'm actually located. So, okay. Uh, all right, so um, I'll move on from there. In terms of um, the module, uh, the rest of what would go into this section, um, once we've uploaded the details of the course team, I would um, recommend that you also, in this section, or clearly labelled at the top, have a module evaluation questionnaire. So again, um, this was, would be added um, in the normal way, so you'd go to the top of the page, turn editing on, add a resource, and you'll see the link to module of evaluation questionnaires, and click on there, and it's fairly straightforward to to add a module evaluation questionnaire. Um, the three other things I've got there, so I've got a module evaluation data and actions identified. So again, this is for the students really to tell them something about the course and also really feedback on what's happened from the previous semester. So 
um, it, it tells the student that you, you know you've listened to what they've said, you've made some changes based on what the students have said in the last semester, and you've adapted maybe the content or the assessment um, where you can to to actually help the students. Along with that, um, it's also maybe a good idea to add the external examiner's report. Again, just to show the students that quite often, I mean, quite often unaware that the, there are external examiners who are checking the content, making sure um, that it's all valid. Um, just hang on one sec. I'm just um, there's we seem to have a slight issue with uh, the presentation of this page. Um, just bear with me for one second. Were you catching any of that? The very first part worked, and then it just stopped. And went, and went. Okay. All right. Apologies for that. We just seem to have an interruption. So I'll just retrack, re, re, retrack in terms of um, some of the things I've just said. So I'm not sure if you actually heard or could actually see what I was doing. So what I was saying before in terms of adding content about the details of the course team, this is really important. So here typically so you would list the course teams, you would list the names of the lecturers, you would list um, their, or give their email addresses so if students wanted to contact you, you would have the room numbers where if you have an office where you could be located and maybe some drop-in times as well in terms of where and when you, you, you would expect students um, maybe could drop in and see you. In addition to that, we would add a module evaluation questionnaire. So all modules must embed this into their course. Again, it's very easy to do. I won't go through it, but in terms of what's expected is to turn editing on and then you will see a uh, uh, the facility to actually then add the module evaluation questionnaire. The last three sections, so again adding um, a module evaluation data is probably based on the previous semester's data but actually shows to the students that you're taking into consideration recommendations that they've made about the course and making it um, better for them to actually access or to do the course. Again, um, similarly um, to add an external examiner's report and then I personally think it's a good idea to actually to include maybe a timetable as well. I know they can get this information maybe somewhere else but it's good for you to put up certainly your class times and the room numbers and then I prefer my preparation preparation pre preference is that you would put maybe the whole course timetable up for the whole week typical week or the semester so that's the kind of content that really is required for the course administration um, the second major area is really to do with um, learning and teaching activities so I've gone into, I've put this into week two in this particular demonstration. So again, this is divided up into different sections. So first of all, we have content really. And 
Um, I'm not going to click on all of these links, um, but first of all here I've got some lecture handouts. So these might be the things that, you know, paper-based things that you might have given out in the class. So a digital copy of that. So any students who maybe um, have lost their paper copy or students who didn't actually couldn't make it to the actual lecture can still get a digital copy of it. I've also uploaded some PowerPoint slides. So again, this is a really, I mean, it's a really simple but effective use of Moodle. Um, quite often as we go through the slides in, in our lectures, um, especially students where English is not their first language, they can go through the slides in their own time um, and maybe absorb the, the content in a, in, 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 in a much easier fashion for the students. Um, along with that, we can also think about different types of content as well. So again here I've put an example of a video um, I won't click on the link here, but actually this starts to break up the content a bit. So this is a video that I've uploaded to YouTube and then embedded into my Moodle module. Again, um, relatively easy thing to do. And again, there was a really good handout on how to do that if you go to the mo um, Moodle module um, help um, as well. OK, so that's kind of the content. But it really is not really asking students to actually do that much. Um, it's up to them what they want to do in terms of the content. The next section is about really trying to get some, some, some level of engagement with a student. And really, this fits in with a sort of blended learning approach. So again, what I've done here is just give some examples of some of the types of activities that um, you can use in a, in a Moodle uh, module. Obviously, this depends on the type of activities you're doing um, and it certainly wouldn't require you to use all of these but it gives you a nice flavor of some of the tools that you can use so the first one is a is, I'll just click on the link is a chat so this might be a facility that you want where you maybe have um, a half an hour or weekly chat around um, whatever you're doing in that week's particular topic. Um, it's probably a chat facility is something that usually takes place in real time. So whereas a forum, which I'll come on to later, which is normally something that might be spread over a week or two, a chat facility is something that you probably typically do that's live. Um, the second example I've got down here is a is is a choice tool. So um, I I've just mocked up something here. It says which is your favourite LSP. BU building and a choice tool is where you ask a question and you give the students a choice and they select one of those choices so you, you can see if they go in they could just click on the button and then save my choice so that would be used I mean say for example you've come to the end of the module and you would want to ask the students oh, what, what's what's the topic you would like to spend the last week on your revision and you could maybe put a list of the eight or nine topics that you would covered in that semester and then the students could click on which one they'd wanted to do um, so that's a really nice simple simple tool um, the next one is quizzes um, so again I've mocked up one here so I'll quickly go into it so um, again, I've, I've chosen a sort of elephant and castle theme to, to this module, um, and this is a typical multiple choice question. So again, the students would read the question, they click on the, um, the what they think is the answer. Um, so um, I presume they they would choose Southwark and finish attempt. So and then obviously depending on the settings you could let them redo that so that could be a revision exercise or you could make that um, more than a formative or even a summative piece of work that they had to do so that's a nice tool that's um, relatively easy to set up I suppose the hardest thing is in terms of thinking of the appropriate questions um, other tools that are there, um, again, probably less used, but quite nice tools in themselves. We have a glossary, so this could be a collaborative task. Um, it's what it looks like. So 
Um, you could maybe the assignment could be something along a list of words that students have to define. Um, it's fairly user friendly, so once it's set up, the student would come along, add a new entry, um, and then type in the concept definition, and it really built, builds up a nice little um, list of terms that maybe you would be using in that semester. Um, in addition to that, um, there are wiki and a wiki tool as well. So I guess most people are familiar with Wikipedia. Here's one I've mocked up. So this would be an example of the wiki's homepage in Moodle. And then I've created additional pages. So for example, this again is about the local history of the Elephant Castle area. Um, there's a page for each one of these and these pages could maybe be associated with a student and the student could then sort of fill in and um, uh, um, write up information about what was required. So I don't really have time to talk about how those tools are actually set up, but at least you get a flavour of the types of tools that exist and make the whole module sort of a bit more interactive rather than just uploading content. Um, other things that are very good to include, so um, make um, module news or announcement. Well, as you can see, by default, there's an announcement at the top of the page, which I've already referred back to. There's a nice help guide in the help section on how to add content to that. Um, in addition to that as well, we would strongly recommend, or the Dell Baseline recommends, that you give some sort of online orientation on how and why and how uh, and who's expected to use the, the module. So again, the Dell Baseline goes through this in, in a little bit of detail. So it would typically include things like what's the purpose of the site, you know, why it exists, what are the expectations of the staff? So will staff go in there, will they upload all their lecture notes um, every week and if so when will they do so, how long will it take for them to respond to discussion forums or queries, that sort of information. So whilst it might provide expectations about the students, it also does so about the students as well. So from the beginning, the students have a clear expectation of what's expected from them. So things like are they expected to contribute to the discussions every forum, every week? Are they expected to read the news? Are they expected to participate in the weekly activities? So um, it's a really good idea to make sure that those things are sort of labelled and maybe even go through them in the first week of the course. Um, but I actually have them written down somewhere very, really clearly on the site as well. And also, how often you expect them to go into the course, and maybe even some expectations of the minimum hours per week that you would expect on some of the activities that they they would need to go to. So, not just in terms of the overall quantity of work, but also something about what 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 it means to contribute as well. So, what's what does it mean to get a, a sort of pass, or what does it mean to um, make an acceptable uh, contribution to a discussion forum. Okay, and then finally, um, where possible, it says try and give some relevant past exam papers or exemplar materials. So again, I've just uploaded here an example of a past exam paper. Again, very easy to do in terms of adding content. Um, maybe you should maybe add a, an additional note to that saying obviously the questions won't be repeated, but this is an example of the type of questions that you get. And then finally, all modules would expect a reading list. So again, in my case here, there's a simple reading list that's just been out uploaded as a PDF but you can do that in a bit more elaborate fashion, especially if you contact the library, you can actually embed an additional box and have the library update the reading list for you as well. Okay, so that's the kind of teaching and learning aspect of, of, of the Dell Baseline. Uh, moving on, the third section is to do with assessment and feedback. And again, 
this is probably the area that students go to first of all quite often with a module so there is a strong recommendation that assignments aren't just set up at the last minute but they're actually set up at the beginning of the course so and they're clearly labeled so it, it, it's really important that students are not having to click make several clicks to find out where the actual assignment is so a recommendation is that they would have maybe create a separate section that say and call it assignment or assessment so it's clearly labeled um, again in terms of the Dell baseline make sure that there's a clear assignment brief so again I've uploaded one here which is just a word document and in that assignment brief you'd expect well it will vary from one topic to another what, what would go in there but obviously would include um, the content and maybe include some of the marking criteria um, and that could be a separate document along with that you would maybe expect um, examples and then not everybody would use this but um, we can actually add a rubric to an assignment so this is very easily done in terms of setting up a Moodle assignment where you can actually uh, add a rubric and then mark the assignment using a rubric um, we've had a previous webinar on that so I won't go through it now but there are um, good guides on how to do that as well also um, we, we have Turnitin assignments. Again, here's, here's an example of a Turnitin assignment. Um, it looks to the student like a link. They click on the link and upload their assignment in there. So again, for Turnitin assignments, student can upload their work. They can see their originality report. And as long as the default settings are not changed, they can re-upload their assignments up until the final deadline. Um, one other last point I'd point out to you, those two, the, those two different types of assignments there. So we've got an assignment with a rubric attached and a turn it in assignment. And I've clearly labeled the due date of when the assignment has to be handed in. So I've just labeled that the 1st and 2nd of July. I've also set in the settings of when I set the assignment up, I set them for 12 o'clock midday. And although the Dell baseline doesn't mention this it's a really good idea to set the the time to actually office hours so if there are any issues the students can contact the IT help desk all right the last uh, few items on this page are um, really just a couple of guides that I've added there um, and a couple of videos so um, in terms of the last section is making sure that feedback is given via this via Moodle back to the students so when the assignments come in um, their mark is, is marked it's graded and then the grades are given back to the students again it's a little bit difficult to show that in the context of the time constraints today but again there's lots of help in terms of how to do that in the mod mod module help section Okay, the final section then of the Dell baseline, so if I were move on to week four, is the learner support information. So again, um, this section here is, is a bit shorter, but maybe contains some of the similar information that we've talked to about before. So, um, but at the top of the page in terms of we'd expect maybe examples of past assessments so I've put a past exam paper here but it, it could just as easily have been some other type of assessment would be some examples of sample model answers for the students so this gives the students some indication the type of levels that the of work that's expected maybe you know if we're using sample model answers it's good to maybe upload something like a pass or or an exceptional piece of work or give them a, the students a spectrum or even some work through examples of if it's a mathematical example or something along with that it's a really good idea to ha maybe have a discussion forum and this is where the students could maybe contact you for help um, again a really good idea towards the end of the course especially if it's an exam based course and students want to ask you a question 
my game, my recommendation if you're going to do this is maybe specify a time um, for when you're actually going to have that discussion forum open and maybe give some students some indication of when you're going to reply to those queries as well. All right, the final bit then is information about specialist tools or software required for the module and how and where to get help. So again, here I've put a couple of links to um, a couple of useful resources. Again, um, I'm not sure how widely these are known about across the whole university, but um, something called lynda.com is a really useful resource um, that the library um, looks after and is a great resource for both staff and students for accessing short videos on training facilities for all things to do with software or even presentation skills as well. Another really useful resource is Box of Broadcast. So again, this is something that you can access via the library pages, I think, on the intranet. And you can actually embed videos or access basically more all the terrestrial TV that's been broadcast um, for the last 10 years or so. OK, so that's, that's a kind of whistle-stop tour of the content of the Dell baseline. Um, it, it provides a variety of all the content that you'll need um, to give the students help in terms of what they're doing. What I'll do now is just return back to a couple of the slides. Um, again, just bear with me for one second in terms of bringing up those slides. Uh... OK, it's just loading the slides. So I think in terms of The baseline is it provides a really good overview of the type of things that you need to do. Um, in terms of the last few things, so um, I've already sort of mentioned the, the how to guide in Moodle, which is again probably the best place to start in terms of help. Um, if you need further help in terms of maybe um, one to one, I will lead lead leave my details up at the end but also there is um, additional support in terms of the learning resources center on a Wednesday afternoon for staff as well so in terms of future webinars um, and again it relates to this in terms of the content so the next webinar that's taking place is on the 6th of June again at the same time and um, that's more to do with getting Moodle ready for the next semester. So we'll, then we'll be talking about how we copy content and activities over from one module, i.e. from last semester's module into new semester's module in September, and then developing out the Dell baseline in terms of making sure that you've got the appropriate content and activities embedded into your course. OK, that's it for this afternoon. Um, thank you for making, uh, for attending that and I'll leave my contact details up on the screen for a little while. Um, I'll also stop the recording.